and they have to be carefully handled. The thing about this kind of clone is it doesn't have a lot of initiative on its own. It'll do what it's programmed to. It'll do what it's told to. If you change the handlers, you can change what the clone does. Okay. And see, that's 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 really deep because I'm pretty sure that there's not a lot of people were aware of the fact that there were organic robots that were walking the earth that were much like us. They look like us. They talk like us. They're very much human like us. And you cannot tell. And so that just goes yeah. to show you where that technology is. Biologically speaking, it's a human body. Consciousness and intelligence speaking, it is not. It's a copy. Wow. And that's kind of it's a copy explain explain that portion of it it's a copy it's a it's a copy of what is it a copy of well these people who are now running around as clones were in fact at one point actual people they didn't just cook this up and butt it in a chamber from scratch they had an original a template that they used to work on and somewhere that individual may still exist as a physical person on this planet, likely in stasis or cryogenic suspension or something like that, because uh, clones have a limited service life. What it is is that he died, but they somehow they was able to preserve him and place him in another body. I want to say... Yeah, that's possible. It's hard to make a soul stick in a clone, but it can be done. Typically, though, what they're doing in the case of these clones is um, they're just cloning the body and then having it handled. And later well, that's forced reincarnation. That's forced, a bit different. Yes. Yeah, so how how is that done? How is there? How are they able to capture um, an ascending soul and force that reincarnation into another body? Well, up until recently, that's what happened here. That's what was going on. That's what all these soul traps and conditioning machinery and setups were intended to do. Capture human souls at the point of death and instead of permitting them to go on to whatever their natural next step was, shuffle them back into the deck, send them back down here. In that case, it sounds like somebody got an instant transference, but usually there's quite a bit of conditioning and mind control and programming that goes on before they shuffle us back in okay and that's what was that is that what the cube was used for all because they yeah. had a number of trap souls up there yep there was facilities on the cube there was facilities on mercury ganymede and Saladus. uh on the moon there were some under the pyrenees here and in other places on this planet and have all of those been have all of those souls been liberated yet? Most of them have. I'm not going to say 100 percent because there may be facilities that we still haven't discovered yet. Do you feel it necessary that we that people should kind of prepare not to be able to have access to food and that kind of thing for a period of time? All right, I live in Canada. Uh -huh. Where I live, we routinely get snowstorms that can knock out food and power and electricity and all of those, you know, and communications and transportation for a week or more. Mm -hmm. On a simple disaster preparedness basis, I would recommend that you have two weeks of food, water, medicines, anything you need. Because if you live anywhere where there is any chance Mother Nature could get uppity... You need to be prepared. From yeah, a social I mean, standpoint, this also makes sense. No fear-mongering involved. Just okay. simple preparation. Remember the Boy Scouts, always be prepared. <laughs> you know, I have what I need in my car for if I uh, plow into a three-foot snow ditch and can't get out. I have what I need to survive two days. In my home, I have what I need to survive two weeks. Uh, scenario, think of it so. in terms of social up upheaval. Think of it in terms of simple disaster preparedness. Earthquakes happen, tornadoes happen, floods happen, hurricanes happen, yeah. snowstorms happen. Not all of these are driven by you-know-who. Some of these are purely natural events. Be prepared. Okay. Well, so do you, you do feel like we've averted like a World War Three 
Well, so far, so good. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> the plan was to kick off World War Three a lot earlier. We haven't permitted it. Yeah, okay. tell, um, Tanop, <laughs> tell them what the Civil Legion been doing to their weapon systems. Everything oh, tries something. have fun. You have a sense of humor. Um, <laughs> bombs and explosives have been replaced with things like chocolate pudding and glitter confetti and uh, oh, no. <laughs> mechanisms jam sometimes. Things stick to things that shouldn't stick to things. Uh, in one case, there was a surface-to-air missile that uh, theatrically veered off and hit a mine in the water. <laughs> Oh, wow. Yes, we have fun with things. Let's just put it that way. No people out there who channel. Channeling is a very dangerous endeavor. Uh You don't have any guarantee of the bona fides of that entity. You don't have uh, the ability to push them out. Once you open yourself to channeling, you become something of an open door or a house with all the doors unlocked and anything can come in, pilfer, poke around, speak through you. And you don't have any guarantee that they are who they are. You have no inner truth sense when you're channeling. It's a dangerous occupation. I don't recommend it. I don't recommend you open yourself to anything. It is not necessary to let something into you in order to communicate with it. I I wasn't going to do it. I just had heard that a lot of people that channel, a lot of times they're channeling more of the reptilians. Yeah, it's outlawed among the Galactic Federations of Planets and the Andromeda Council. The main positive associations that are involved with terror right now outlaw channeling. Are you familiar with David Icke? I am familiar with David Icke. Just kind of wanted to know what you'd have to say about him. His old stuff is really good. At one time he said that the Silver Legion grew from 10,000 to uh, 50,000 members. Uh, can yeah, you say why that, no, uh, yes. this number has gone up uh, so high and uh, what are the reasons behind it? Uh, very, very intensive recruiting campaigns. We need the numbers. Okay. We know we need the numbers. So we conducted That's some okay. very, very intensive recruiting campaigns, not uh, not just in this universe but in others. How's Grimm doing? What's happened with him? Uh, Grimm is currently helping a teammate uh, with some recon and uh, intelligence gathering. He is not currently uh, playing chicken with any asteroid fields, which is good. Because that's how he bought it last time. Uh Uh-huh. Wait a minute. He was doing what? (laughs) Somebody mined some asteroids and uh, let Grimm know about it. He's a bit of a hotshot pilot. Anybody who's ever dealt with uh, hotshot pilots know the type. You tell them, don't go in there. It's suicide. So what do they do? They go in there. And he did. And he uh, met his demise on an asteroid, destroyed his scout craft, had to be brought back to life. I grounded him for three whole months. <laughs> <laughs> but he's back in the air and uh, having fun. He was, Yeah, that's what I'm saying. He was just out having fun. Boys and their toys. <laughs> yeah, well, it's not just boys. You... The hot shot pilot mentality occurs among women, too. <laughs> yeah, so you got to let them have their fun. I mean, you know, hey, listen. I, yeah, I'd like to fly through an asteroid field, too, in a hot shot play. <laughs> so if you take it out, you got to want to play. Well, uh, you said that uh, there was some gen- genetic modifications by the, uh, by, the, by the reptilians where they basically uh introduced pain and risk of uh death during childbirth. Uh do you know how this was done and um how long it took to implement? Uh no, I'm not a genetics expert. My um uh, one of my brothers is a genetics master and he could probably answer that, but he's not uh he's not physical and able to talk. And I have okay. limits to the amount of technical information I can uh bring through. But All yes, right. it he says it occurs uh, occurred over about a thousand year period mm-hmm. that the manipulations were made. The first manipulations that were made were the ones that shorten our lifespan from the natural 3D human lifespan of 1,000 to 1,500 years to 50 to 100, if we're lucky. Mm-hmm. Okay, and why was that done? 
because a mayfly population is a lot easier to control than an elephant population. So the shorter lifespan, so they keep bringing them in and programming them, catching them from birth. And Okay. Yeah. Because when you have somebody who does not live a uh, regular length of time that a human being is supposed to live, they can learn less, they can understand less in their life. And when you wipe their memory between lives, you can over time achieve a kind of a almost like a blank slate and start reprogramming it the way you want. It's an iterative process. It was never a instant process, never intended to be an instant process. It was intended to be a two, uh, 26,000 year long iterative process, a slow takeover. Are we in a different cycle now? Yep. Okay. And what cycle are we in? I don't know that I have a name for it. You wow. know, I'm, I'm not one of these people who has to declare it in, you know, the age of Aquarius or something like that. <laughs> so so you, will, you don't want to call it that. What, what would you, but how would you explain the cycle that we're about to embark upon now? Transition. Transition to the fourth and higher dimensions. And to all those people who want to skip straight to the fifth, unless you're from the fifth, it's not going to happen. You, this isn't a race to the end. From what I have observed in the people around me, even people who a year ago, their primary concern was, um, you know, mowing the lawn or finding a job or whatever, are now talking about subjects that I have kept mum on for years because of ridicule. The everyman, so to speak, is starting to come awake, and it's a beautiful thing. I want to learn to uh, learn the psychic uh, power or ability. Uh, do you have any uh, books or manual that you can recommend? The problem with books and manuals is that most publishers are compromised. And if you want your book or your manual to be published will always su suggest some certain changes which seem subtle but have a huge impact in terms of success. In some cases, you have practitioners who are selling their methods for money and those methods have been designed to give you a certain degree of success to l allow you to think that you're succeeding, but you're actually feeding into the enemy's goals. So in this case, what I would suggest to you crowdsource it use the internet follow your gut if something inside is saying this doesn't sound completely right take the stuff that does sound completely right and modify it to suit your needs uh, can you give uh, some tips on how to communicate with uh, uh, with our uh, angel well for one thing don't let anything into your body don't let anything into your mind you don't ever need to let anything inside of you in order to communicate. Instead, project your thought outside and meet halfway, kind of like a handshake. Now, for me, when I was learning telepathy, it did not start with words. It started with images and emotions. Set out your intention to speak to a specific individual not just generally whoever's listening, because that might not always be a person with your best interest in mind. S intend specifically to contact something that loves you unconditionally, that is there with your best interests in mind, that will not harm you, and that comes in the, the highest good. Can, can you clarify, uh, can you explain a little bit more uh, on, uh, uh, about uh, not to let anything get into our body? Uh, what do you mean by that? What I mean is don't let some, something try to possess you, whether they call it channeling or whatever they call it. Don't let something come into your mind and control your body. 